There are more than 58,000 names on this wall. They all died in Vietnam, but what about the life they led before and the people they left behind? I decided to pick one name off the wall, do a little research and see what we could come up with. And the name that caught my eye is right here. Online, I found information about his military career, his death, and eventually... I loved him dearly. I found his daughter in California. He went away, he wrote letters to me. And I kept every single one of them. This is the story of joyful Joseph Jenkins. Born in Loxley, Alabama in 1927, he was one of 10 kids raised in this house. Seven boys and three girls. Still a child when his father died, Joyful's mother took charge of their small farm. She was a powerhouse. Uh, for our family. Amelia Jenkins innovated and expanded. In 1953, Ebony Magazine featured them as Alabama's richest farm family. Today, her home is on the National Register of Historic Places, but Joyful didn't live long enough to see that. He finished yeah. college. He went to Tuskegee, and he got a degree in agriculture. He dreamed of flying. And back in that day, the only way an African-American man could, man could even think of getting an airplane and taking it off the ground would be uh, to go into the military. At 26, while stationed in Texas, he married Jimmy C. Tunsil. Sheriffs came along, and the family of three went wherever Uncle Sam sent them, stateside and abroad. He left uh, to go on his tour when I was 13. Joyful and Jimmy shielded their only child from the harsh realities of the Vietnam War. He and I love uh, grape soda. But nothing could shield Sheriffs from what would happen next. The doorbell rang. It was a man in uniform, and there was a lady, I remember, and one more person. So they asked to see if, if my mother was in. First words out of her mouth was, is he missing or is he dead? And they said, unfortunately, Mrs. Jenkins, he was killed yesterday. Joyful died in an accident coming back from a mission from Vietnam. Joyful's nephew, Alvin Jenkins, knows what happened. It was raining buckets of water. After completing a surveillance assignment over Vietnam, a pilot brand new to the crew was struggling to touch down in Thailand. The radio announcer in Thailand told him, hey, we got a base in, in, in Vietnam that you can land on. This, this storm is too bad. And the pilot said, no, no, I can make it. Let me make another approach. It slammed into the ground, and the plane kind of exploded. There were some survivors, but Joyful was among eight killed. I'm sitting in that black and white dress in Arlington on that crisp uh, September uh, day and looking at the casket and thinking, it's not long enough because I didn't see him. My mother chose not to let me see him. Sheris believes the crash, in a way, killed both her parents. It changed our life forever. Forever. It changed our life forever. I've never experienced somebody whose de devastation just carried on until the day she died. She actually died nine years later. She had a heart attack. Joyful and Jimmy are buried together at Arlington National Cemetery under a headstone that notes Joyful was a major in the U.S. Air Force. So when people talk to me and ask me what my dad is, I always say Lieutenant Colonel, because he earned that. Days before he died, he'd phoned home to share news of his promotion. My mother was so ecstatic for him. Joyful's name can be found elsewhere in Washington, D.C., saw a joyful name on the wall and that was a great experience what do you think when you look and see all those other names those people are, are my hero but the vietnam veterans memorial which inspired this story does not inspire sheriffs my first thought was look how many families are fragmented she sees the monument as a nod to the past but says there's pain in the present once i didn't come back in a casket they should have a life that is not challenging the way it is. Decent job, decent medical uh, coverage. She wonders if lawmakers really understand the burdens placed on military families. If they think it's good enough for us and the rest of all these people that do that, then their family members should be the first 
to be in line. For Sherris, words in stone will never compare to the ones written by her father the day before he died. 5th, September, 1969. My dearest Sherris, how are you today? I trust that all is well with you and mother. At present, I am in the best of health. I have a little gift ordered for you. Now, don't try to guess what it is. I will give it to you when I get home. Did you ever receive the gift? Yes, so the gift was in his belongings, and it's a picture of himself in a locket that he had painted, etched in uh, Thailand. Love Joyful. He signed every one of his letters, Love Joyful. Not Love Daddy, not Love Dad, not your father. <laughs> love Joyful. Todd Tanner, Fox 13 News, Utah.